Hi everybody, I wanted to create this short video to summarize what we did in class today, December 2. Um, and this was our activity with the Jello cells, so I want to make sure we're all okay with what we did in class and why we did it, and what this activity actually illustrates about cells. Remember, every cube that you cut out of the gelatin represented a cell, and we had cells of different sizes, or cubes of different sizes, and we put those cubes in the sodium hydroxide solution, and when the sodium hydroxide solution diffused into those cells, it turned the phenolphthalein that was on the inside of that gelatin turned it pink. That's how we know the sodium hydroxide was diffusing into the cells. And we let that diffuse for 15 to 20 minutes, and then we pulled the cubes out, and we took a cross-section through those cubes. And we found out that there was a ring of pink around one of the cross-section pieces, and there was actually a part, uh, a square part on the inside of the cube where the sodium hydroxide had not diffused to yet, and so that part of the cube was still the gelatin color, the sort of clear color of the gelatin. And so we were able to subtract the volume of the non-diffused area from the volume of the original cube that you cut, and we were able to find out the volume of the diffused area, which is a rather irregular shape, um, which is why we have to do that subtraction of the interior area that wasn't diffused from the original cube to actually get the diffused area or the, the or sorry, the diffused volume or the volume that was taken up by that pink volume inside um, the cube. Um, and we did this because uh, we wanted to figure out how how cells get things through diffusion. So whether it's glucose or oxygen or water, some real materials that a cell might want to get to the inside of the cell, um, that cell would have to wait for those materials to diffuse. And I think uh, most groups found that as we made those cubes smaller and smaller, the percent at which the sodium hydroxide diffused into that cube got higher and higher. In other words, as the cells get smaller and smaller, they're able to take advantage of things diffusing into them better. And so there's an advantage for a cell to be small. And in fact, cells are more than small, they're microscopic. And so when uh, scientists first started to discuss cells and, and why they're microscopic, um, at first it was unclear why cells need to be so small and why they need to be microscopic. Um, and so part of the answer is that they can take advantage of diffusion of materials much better than they can do so when they're big cells. So in other words, our big cubes, only a small portion of them diffused during the time frame. Um, but the smaller we made the cubes, the higher percentage of those cubes were diffused during the same time frame. And then we took the calculation sort of to the next level, and uh, we tried to bring the, um, the time it would take to diffuse 100% of the cube or the cell down to the size of a microscopic cell. Uh, microscopic cell. Um, and we found that it would take roughly one or two thousandth of a second for any kind of material, uh, or your average type of material, to, di to diffuse from any part of the exterior of the cell or the cube all the way through to the interior of that cell or cube. Um, and one or two thousandths of a second is a very short time frame, um, but that's the kind of time frame that cells are dealing with. Cells need to do things fast, they need to react fast, they need to make sure that they don't die, they need to get what they need when they need it, and when they're small, they can get what they need in a very short time frame if they're small. And if they're more than small, if they're microscopic, um, they can get things very, very quickly, one or two thousandths of a second to get whatever it is that they need any moment of their life is, um, is a benefit. And actually, the reason why cells are microscopic is through evolution. Natural selection selects for cells that are microscopic over time because they have an advantage over bigger cells. And we also discussed that as a cell grows throughout its lifetime, it gets to a point where it is actually too big. It's not getting what it needs quick enough, and so it divides. And so um, that's what the homework video is about. It's about mitosis, or how cells divide. But one of the reasons why they divide is that they've grown too big to sustain themselves. Um, and of course, this is too big on a microscopic level. But even on a microscopic level, the, the difference between one thousandth of a second and two thousandth of a second may actually be um, the kind of difference that natural selection would actually act upon um, and favor cells that are smaller. So again, this week's topic is cell division, and one of the reasons why cells divide is because they've gotten too big to sustain themselves, and one of the reasons why cells are so small is because they can get diffused materials very, very quickly. So I hope that uh, wasn't too confusing, and I hope that helps summarize today's lesson. Um, go ahead and, and, and review the video if you're a little confused, and come with any kind of questions that you have to class.